Okay, so Dan, that's what, six and a bit hours hot seat I've just done. Yes. Are yeah. always this exhausting? Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, different people, well, first of all, of course, you traveled. Yeah. God knows. And you got in at two o'clock in the morning our time. Something like that. that was something but like I had that. yesterday off. So, yeah, but still. So for you, it's either yesterday or tomorrow or the middle of the night or whatever. But even it, so. Yeah, it is. I think that. So like you're staying tomorrow to work on what we did, which That's is the plan. commendable. It takes it serious. Uh, about half the clients do that. I mean, I, I have one client who comes in with his staff and they camp out the whole day before preparing and they stay yeah, the day after. Yeah, that's pretty much what um, I did. I think that it's tiring for both of us. It will hit me a couple hours from now um, because it is, at least for me, it is um, um, endorphiny while you're doing it. Um, because I think that, I find it much more interesting to be doing it spontaneously, working without the net. I mean, a little bit of prep with you because you prepared notes and sent them in. Some people don't. Uh, but So I really like the figuring out of the things. But about two hours from now, it will, I will realize I have actually expended a great deal of energy. Mm. I think for the, part for the participant, who has an elongated one. I mean, 30 minutes on one thing, in some ways is more intense yeah. than yeah. five and a half hours on a, on a broad range of things. Um, but most people are kind of burnt uh, by the end of it, as you probably are. Um, most are glad that they recorded um, and at our event, they can record theirs if they want to. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, the most people are glad that they've done it because going back through it two or three times, a lot of people get the recording transcribed so they have it in writing to work with. If I work with a client, I always get it them to get it transcribed and give it to That's me. That's what I was planning. To so do. you know, I have the record of it. Um, but it, the truth of the matter is, most people, and maybe even you do not really stop the doing unless they're forced to just think about their business for any significant period of time. And most people don't get themselves really challenged. So I'm sure you challenge your elite people in the mastermind setting just as I challenge titanium members in the mastermind setting here. But that may be the only time they get challenged um, by anybody they have any respect for. I mean, they get challenged at some level by their staff digging their heels in and not wanting to do X, Y, or Z. But I mean, somebody really making you defend your ideas is, is I think, extremely useful and typically the more successful person is the less they get that. I have a client I've had for since 1987 and in that period of time they've grown to be a multi-billion dollar business and its CEO says oh there goes my talking Mickey Mouse clock. Um, I've had this all day. <laughs> um, um, road. Um, so he describes my value principally as being an irritant and a pain in the ass who, A, reminds them of direct response fundamentals, which they keep drifting from, and has absolutely no respect for the fact that they've built a multi-billion dollar company and that they are all rich, <laughs> and, and, and that that really is my value to them. Yeah, I mean, for me, the real value, I mean, I'm going to go over the the recording is tomorrow, I'm going to get them transcribed as well. But for me, certainly sitting here now, all I can remember of, I mean, eight hours is a long time. What I can remember of it is there's, there are some fundamental assumptions I've made which were plainly wrong. There are some things I've been doing all this time which were fundamentally right, which is really nice to know. Um, and on a, there are a few things, and I actually expected this, and I wrote about it in my emails to my, to my crowd, and 
um, I've mentioned it in my faxes to my elite group. There was, I said I didn't know what to expect, only that it's going to be awesome. And what I did say was, I do know there will be things that come up that I can't even imagine thinking about now, because I, I don't know what I don't know. And there's a couple of things you said about the Amway stuff hadn't even occurred to me. It wouldn't have occurred to me in a million years. And that's the value, I think, of having someone like you working on the business. Because one of the things I find about Elite is I can sit out someone else's, outside someone else's business and I can just point out and say, that shit, that shit, that shit, you need to change that. Can't do it for myself. And I think most people find that. The experience I have with people tends to, in some cases, just be verification. Meaning, shit, that's exactly the way I would do it. And you're a genius. And there's no reason for either you or I to screw with this at all. Um, and in some cases, it's clarification. Mm. So people kind of have an idea of what they want to do, or they have a kind of an idea of what needs to be repaired or replaced or fixed. Um, but it's foggy. It's almost as if you have cataracts and you kind of have bad vision and we can get to clarity. Um, sometimes that's about what not to do or what not to do now, which we had some of that with you today. Yeah. And, and I always say that because the entrepreneurial impulse is to say yes to everything, um, um, that the decisions about what not to do or what not to do now are often as important and beneficial as any decision about what to do. Um, everything's easier to get into than it is to get out of, but uh, but if you're if you're a true blue entrepreneur, your tendency is to jump into every opportunity um, and even to feel a little guilty about not, <laughs> you know, and, and so some help with restraint. Um, and ranking is sometimes yeah. useful. Uh, almost everybody, even in short, uh, I just did a hot seat meeting for a group of ortho orthodontists. All very successful. 800,000 to $2 million a year practices. About half the people in the room, multi-location businesses, other single location businesses. And, um, um, there was everything from, and on average, 30 minutes. But they benefit from everybody's, right? Because mm -hmm. often, as you say, looking at somebody else's business um, is sometimes easier for everybody to do than looking at their own. But out of that, they go, oh, you know, that's going on in mine too. And yeah. that really should be happening over here. I mean, we had everything in that room from people walking out who came in thinking they were in one business and left in an entirely different business, uh, what I call replacement or reinvention. Others walking out feeling pretty damn good about 90% of what they were doing, but a screw that could be tightened here, a screw that could be tightened here, a screw that could be tightened here, and if there's any kind of serious revenue, those screws you know, all add up um, and everything in between. And uh, as long as somebody is open to the process, the process is usually extremely productive one way or another, you know, for everybody. Um, it can be painful. You have sure. to know these things. The, the painful truth is the truth nonetheless. I have on three different occasions <clears throat> had women run, leave the room crying. Um, yeah, we've had tears in elite too. Yeah, I don't try to do that, but um, uh, so, it, you know, it can be painful. And how long have you been doing this now? 40 oh, years? Yeah, give or take. Um, I mean, I've been doing my things, uh, advertising, marketing, direct marketing, consulting, strategy, um, copywriting. I've been doing those things. This will, next year will be my 42nd year. Jeez. So you've probably okay. seen just about everything that is possible to see. The thing about advertising and marketing, which you know very well, is that the principles never change. No. Right? What worked in 1800 works now. And really, if you don't have that historical foundation, if you don't know what is consistent, what is a principle, 
what really is a principle that is kind of inviolate. It is like gravity. Uh, nothing changes it. Um, um, it, it, it. Strategies change some. Uh, tactics change a lot, uh, mostly because we get new tools, we get new media, we get an ability to have more data. Um, uh, so we have more opportunity to intelligently use strategy and to intelligently use principles. But so in the 42 years, I have seen a lot. Uh, I've seen an awful lot of mistakes and an awful lot of things that get done over and over and over again, sometimes in the same damn business. Um, you deal with a big category of it, which is everything that falls under the umbrella of price strategy. I mean, most businesses, they, have, they haven't even really given any thought to it. They've just done whatever the hell everybody no, else does. Most businesses, businesses are gets. price driven. They, they yeah. Knee jerk reaction is to cut prices off of discounts. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, just yeah. find it insane. And it's a very uh, incestuous process. I mean, they get in a business, so they open, I don't know, a pet store. And they look around at what everybody yeah. else does in the pet store business, and they try to be a little cheaper. That's sort of usually That's the price strategy, right? It, but people don't understand it. it. It goes hand in hand with positioning. It's there's presentation of price that's different than price, and so there's a huge number of price mistakes that are made. Um, uh, and more often than not, so I said to you off camera, and when you were doing copywriting, I'm sure the same thing was true. 90% of the clients, even though my clients are pretty smart and they've kind of been raised up in my environment and they've read my newsletters and they've read my, still, when a new client comes, they come usually wanting a new ad. I need a new better ad. I need a new sales letter. I need a new website because I need new customers. I need new patients. I need new leads. Uh, and Real, usually, neither one of those things is what they need most. Um, but at best, only one of those things is what they need most because they have all these other uh, places where money's already flowing, mm. a lot of it. And they're dipping into it with a teaspoon when they could be dipping into it with a bucket. Well, this is the found money you speak of, isn't it? Yeah. People, there's money in businesses sitting there in, in terms of their customer list. Um, the prospect list that they're not even bothering to dip into. I, mean, no. I get it all the time myself. Where can I get new business? Well, what they want, what they say they want these new customers, what they mean is they need new business, yeah. but they can get the business from the existing customers. And well, it's the easiest right. money they'll ever make. That's exactly right. And it has a lower cost per sale and you yeah. know all of that. I mean, that, so that almost always happens in hot seats. Is the person starts with an issue, a question, a thing about their business they want to focus on. And almost as they are describing it to me, I'm thinking, this guy's focused on the wrong stuff. I mean, even in my own business, I, I had a boot camp uh, three years ago, 2013. And it was the night before, and I was, I was preparing for it. I was tired. I was, I'd been up late. And I thought, I sh I've got 35 people in the room that paid me a £1,000 each to be here. I should really try and sell these people something. Oh, I can't be bothered. Yeah, but there's like these two angel and a devil on my shoulders. But you've got these people in the room. Oh, I can't be bothered. But you've got these people in the room. So I, I threw together a one-page sales thing. And you can ask the guys who did it when you meet them at the um, Potter Gold in March. I gave the lowest key possible sales pitch. Remember Nido Cobain, how he sells his box? Yeah. I've got a box of stuff. Give me $400 and I'll send it to you. That, yeah. that kind of thing. And I handed these, these forms out. And out of the 35 people in the room, 11 of them signed up straight away. That's how we kicked off Elite, and I wasn't going to bother doing it. And since then, I was three years, it's probably been worth more than half a million pounds to me, and a lot of fun as well. Um, and that was found money, because I nearly didn't bother. I nearly just couldn't be bothered to do it. Well, you know, there's a lot of businesses that are, by their nature, transactional. If you just increase the frequency of somebody by 20% per year, 40% over the two years, and you have no cost of getting them there except a little discount or a little perk. Imagine what that does, you know, to your business um, continuity. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all sorts of businesses, including the restaurant industry, where we have put continuity in place and dramatically increased the average customer value by doing it. Also, steadied cash flow, 
Uh, but the increase in the customer value, it's all found money. You already had the restaurant. You already had the customer. I haven't changed anything except how we monetize yeah. that customer, how we structure the relationship with that customer. I think it's fair to say you can put continuity into almost any business. Just about. Just about. It varies a little business by business as to whether it makes sense. You know, not every opportunity, as I said earlier, ought to be jumped on mm, by, yeah, yeah. by by everybody. But uh, people under monetize their customers and they under monetize their leads, their unconverted leads. There's a whole appointment no sale issue in a lot of businesses. And the business owner and the salesperson will particularly say, there's no point in following up on him. I just gave him my best dog and pony show. We took him out in the car and drove him around the block. We hung him upside down on the exercise thing. You know, it, if he isn't going to buy from that, he's never going to buy. And the empirical data about that in every business, including cars, where it's almost a secular religion, that if you don't sell the guy while he's on the lot, you're not going to sell him. The empirical data about all that evidence is they're all wrong, mm, right? Yeah. There's money in those unconverted leads who are going to buy three weeks later, three months later, yes, in some right. businesses three years later. And, and often there's the ability to increase the business by 30%, 40%, 50% in appointment no sale activity. So um, when I'm listening to somebody tell me about their business, um, I have a big bank of experience either with the same yeah. business or with similar businesses and, and or similar customer bases, right? Um, the orthodontists who I do a lot of work with right now, their customer is the same as the customer I've worked with for years with Guthrie Ranker at Proactive for acne treat treatment. It's the same customer. It's a mom with a preteen or teen boy or girl who is getting shame bullied, doesn't feel good about themselves because of their appearance, um, and has an appearance related problem to be fixed. So acne glop, teeth braces, <laughs> Well, glop's a technical term. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference, right? As long as the customer's in common, I now know a lot about what to do for that business that'll be more effective. It's very much a starving crowd as well, isn't it? In that particular case. Some segment of it, yeah. Yeah, mom with the daughter who won't come out of the bedroom, um, there's a certain level of, you know, beyond frustration or urgency to yeah, that, yeah. you know, to that person. Now we'll crank that up. We'll, of course. we'll worry them about bullying and online social shaming and teen suicide. And, you know, we'll back the hearse up to the door, uh, <laughs> metaphor. Well, I love that expression. Uh, but, uh, but, but the foundation's there to start with, right? Yeah. So you're bringing two groups. Yeah. Two groups of people, um, some will probably come from locally because there are uh, people from the US on my list, but most of them are going to be coming from the UK, some from Australia, Qatar, possibly Norway, certainly Ireland. Um, <clears throat> two groups of people, they'll be the victims who are going to go through a much gentler but probably just as profitable experience that I've been through today. Um, probably 35, 45 minutes of sitting there with Dan and possibly me kind of working on the business, I'd probably just sit there and look smart, whereas you'd sit there and be smart. But you have assured me there's no need to be gentle. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want you to be gentle. I can I'm be not my, known for my gentleness. I can be at my most direct and obnoxious and... That is what they're paying for. Speediest. Yeah, they, don't, they, they want it to be, to be painful. The more painful it is, the better. Perfect. Because if, if it's painful, you're obviously hitting some very, very yep. sensitive truths. But that's the first group of people with the hot seats. The second group of people who are going to just sit and watch everybody else. Now, I must, must kind of stress You know there is an ancient whorehouse joke about that. that I didn't, but you I'm don't know to the hear joke. it. No, 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 you're <laughs> not going to hear it. Okay, tell me off You're not going to hear it. I'll tell you off, off but camera. But I, I do know but that... that's um, not a new idea. Although, <laughs> although people can't 
they can record their own hot seats. You're not going to record anybody else's. If I find no. anybody doing that, I'll break their legs. Yeah, we'll archive it, but yeah. it will never be used. No, no, nor should it be. No. And I think people should also be prepared to respect the privacy of others and you know, don't talk about it outside yeah, the group that's right. itself. But yes, the two groups of people, victims and voyeurs, as we call them. I think anyone who's got the opportunity to come along, if they don't, they're mad. I mean, it speaks volumes that we've got 10, I think it's 10 victims already, and all but one are in my elite group. So they know me. They know you as well. They know what they can be in, what they to it. They know what to expect. Probably, or to some extent. To some extent. Yeah, they, they've been told that this is not going to be pleasant. If you think I'm tough in a hot seat, you wait till you hear Dan. Um, and it's, I think it's very telling that we've got 10 of them have signed up. Well, nine of them, all but one is from my elite group. So they know what they're in for. Mm. So I think anybody, anybody listening to us talking now, having any kind of doubts, I don't think there are 10 people who have done this, signed up for it already, having been with me for years already. Um, I think there's a message there. A very powerful one, a scary one. Yeah, we'll all have a lot of fun. I mean, we'll oh, have a lot of fun. Without doubt, without doubt. Um, uh, but the object is for somebody to walk away with three or four or five really actionable things. I that, think that's that, um, a given. You know, that either makes a monetary difference or it makes a, um, a quality of business life difference. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big autonomy guy, as you are, and um, you know you've been here all day, and the phone is rung once. Yep. And no that was not long ago. And no faxes come in, and there's been no interruptions or disturbances, right. and other than days when phone calls are scheduled, that's exactly what it's like around here. Um, uh, and it's not because there's not a lot going on; it's because it's being well controlled and access is being well controlled and um, my own business is really done at my convenience and by my access roles and so sometimes people we don't necessarily need to raise their income but we can raise their quality of business life yeah. uh, by what we discover um, and by strategies I'm able to prescribe examples I'm able to give them because in many cases, people, um, I don't remember now which writer it was, Oscar Wilde maybe, or James Thurber, who said, I've discovered that I really don't like writing, but I'm so famous now I can't quit. Um, a lot of people wind up in that position in their businesses. Is They come to the realization that they have a successful business too successful to walk away from yeah, and yeah. what else am I going to do right but they're waking up to the fact that there's a lot of it that is bossing them around rather than they are truly the boss or they're waking up to the fact that their business is not really a business it's a high paid but fragile job right and so those are the kind of things that can often be fixed from the marketing side, from the who you get as a customer, how you get them, how you process them, how you price services to them. Um, and so I often uh, am monkeying around as much with how do you want this to be as I am with how much do you want it to pay. Yeah, I, um, I, can, I can attest to many of the things you said today have been not even stuff I didn't know but reminding me of a refined way of doing what I was probably already doing and how to do it better, but no, with no extra work involved for me as well. So, yeah, I think that's I think a very valid point there. Well, so I'm excited about doing it. You and I will have fun. Um, I'm, sure. I'm counting on you to bring me people who will have fun and be productive and, and have good businesses that we can build on. And yeah. uh, we got, you know, a couple of cool little extras. We'll take them to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a quick visit. Casino. And we'll go over to the casino we'll for an PD. evening. And uh, for everybody that's watching, come on over. Join us. Celebrate St. Patrick's Day over here instead of over there. And, uh, you know, we'll have a great meeting. It'll be the first, only, and last chance you've got to do this.